Is anybody got any confetti? Yes! Every girl oh, wow. I do. likes to take control of her wedding. So what happens when she has no say on her big day? Oh, they are awful. We're not doing it. Don't tell the bride is back. This is ridiculous. As ever, the grooms are in charge. I want this to be donkey at the wedding. I'm going to look lovely on that big day. But with £12,000 to spend <gasps> and just three weeks to throw the wedding of their dreams... <laughs> Have the boys pushed themselves too far? Oh, my God! The fires! With more shocking, more outrageous, and more daredevil weddings than ever before, will there be a happy ever after? This is not the thing you get wrong the day before your wedding. Will true love save the day? Mum, what is that? Mum, what is that? Or is it a countdown to disaster? Three, two, one! Tonight... Girls do that. Gays don't do that. Former drama student Jack... Oh, my God! ..is hoping to impress his husband-to-be, James. This needs to look nice, otherwise James will just think we're idiots. ..by putting on the performance of a lifetime. Scene one. In there, we need Lysander. But with James's sight set on a traditional wedding... Just a little bit scared now. ..what happens when our groom turned theatre director... Oh... ..takes on a literary classic... Mr. Night's Dream. I want this to be an actual, real-life donkey. <laughs> <laughs> and a wedding. Having the play, as well as the wedding, that is way too much. Will it be a Midsummer Night's Dream? Yes! <laughs> or a Shakespearean tragedy? What the hell is going Stop. on? Stop. <laughs> 26-year-old Jack is marrying the love of his life, 24-year-old James. Jack and James live in Essex and have been together for four years. When I first saw him, I was just like, oh, it's all right. I and mean, then when you like, you stalk him on Facebook, obviously, that's what you do. <laughs> and then when you go for you, you're just like, oh, actually, this is fun. <laughs> James is very, very caring, and he does do a lot for me. Having been to drama school, Jack has a passion for the theatre, whilst James, who works in retail, has to live with his eccentric ways. I'm outgoing, and I like to just do things and just be like, oh, that's really fun, we should do that, because that'll be interesting. But I do get bored easily. Look, I'm not an idiot. Hey, brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> While outgoing Jack loves to take centre stage, James prefers setting the scene at home. The whole house it, it is my taste. Jack, it doesn't have a say. I love everything I've done. I had no say. No, not in colours, because you're colourblind, so that doesn't, there's no point. You're not picking wall colours. OK, <laughs> so, yeah, I had no say at all. Jack may play a minor role when it comes to their home life, but the tables are about to turn as he takes control of the biggest day in both their lives. So it's quite nice for me to be able to go, this time, I'm going to do everything. While organised James will have absolutely no say in the wedding whatsoever. It is going to be the most stressful three weeks of my life, I think, because it's the biggest day of your life and you, I don't get a say, do you know what I mean? And I'm giving it to the guy that I don't let wash up because he doesn't do it properly, <laughs> but now he's going to organise my big day. That's what I'm scared about. The couple may have their differences, but one thing they do agree on is the importance of family. We're obviously going to get married, and this is going to be the house we're going to come back to. This is the house we're going to have kids in, so I mean, the house we're looking to foster. You don't have to be married to, to foster children, but for us, getting married is the next step in our relationship, and then the next step after that is to do the fostering, and then we'll have a really strong family unit. And I think it's nice to be able to offer that stability to a child. Sadly, one family member will be missing from their big day, Jack's mum. My family over the last four or five years have gone through quite a lot. Because we've only been together for like a, a month. month. James was planning to meet my mum on the Saturday and then she passed away on the Tuesday. Me and my mum, were, we were like best friends. I've heard so much about Jesus and I feel like I, I know him. Inspired by his mum and with this the first year of same-sex marriage, Jack's determined to make this wedding a production to remember. We're lucky that we have no traditions to stick to. You know, if it's a, if it's a man and a woman getting married, you have people and aunties and uncles might go, oh, well, you didn't do this, and you know, you'd have to do that, you're a man and a woman. What traditions do we have? None whatsoever. We literally make it up on the spot. We can even make traditions now. Jack's creative juices may be flowing, but James is hoping to celebrate equal marriage in a very different way. My dream wedding date will literally be a nice, proper, old-fashioned, traditional wedding. Nothing outrageous, and it'll just be a day for all of us to remember. Jack's mother might be absent on his big day, but he wants to make sure she's not forgotten. I had a few ideas of how I wanted to incorporate my mum within the day. My mum was in Midsummer Night's Dream when I was... Younger, I think it was about six or seven, and it was her favourite Shakespeare. So when thinking about themes and things for weddings, that just sprung to my mind straight away. To honour his mum's love of Shakespeare, Jack wants to stage the performance of a lifetime, directing an hour-long version of Shakespeare's A Midsummer Night's Dream for James and their guests to watch. I'm incorporating a lot of what my friends do as a profession, which is acting. It is literally, I've chosen a play as the theme, and then I'm going to be, like, directing my wedding. But that's, that's fun. A Midsummer Night's Dream is a comedy about young lovers set in a fairy forest wonderland. So the question is, can Jack really pull off one of Shakespeare's most successful, complicated and eccentric plays with just £12,000? I want to be very creative. This isn't going to be a kind of normal, traditional wedding. This is going to be an event.
who cares if it's in the back garden? Like, it doesn't matter. Like, we're getting married. And our friends and family that love us and support us are going to be there. We're not, not getting married in the back garden. It's time for our couple to say goodbye. Today, Jack moves out to plan the wedding, and James is making sure he's set for the next few weeks. Thank you. Some no, don't put it in the thing. Thank you, Jim. You're nervous, aren't you? Yes, very, very nervous. <laughs> it's three weeks. We can do it. Yeah, it'll be fine. After four years together, the couple are going to find it hard spending time apart. You're taking the house with you, aren't you? All right. Yeah. Okay. See you later. Go for it. See you on our wedding day. Have fun. Not too much fun. As Jack drives away, the pressure of staging this ambitious production is already playing on his mind. I could list quite a lot of my fears at the moment. Like, there's, there's lots of things that I'm worried about, but I think I won't know the answers until I actually start organising it. While Jack prepares for his directorial debut, James is waiting in the wings at home. He's invited bridesmaid Alex and friend Kelly to keep him company. Cheers to Jack coming! Cheers to Jack. <laughs> so how are you feeling now? He's... Yeah. No, I'm scared. And about I'm not, what? Like, I'm what just scared think? because what's going to happen in obviously in three weeks' time. But I'm, I think I'm more upset. Are you worried about like the choices he's going to make, or are you, do you just completely trust him? No, I don't trust him. <laughs> <laughs> we know that. We don't, I don't trust him. What would you do like if it was like, like a thing? No, you, you don't have do. really have things for weddings, do you? I want traditional, just like sit down for a free course meal. I don't want. You don't want anything too out there. Yeah. Is what you're saying. You don't want anything like flamboyant. Oh. But flamboyant is exactly what Jack is going for, and he's travelled to London to move in with best man and fellow thespian Jay. Go. Hello, mate. Hi. You're right. Good to see you. For the next three weeks, Jay is giving up time with his girlfriend to help Jack plan the wedding. But James is already worried about what that might mean. Because they both went to drama school, I hope the wedding and drama school are not, they're not going to relate that. Do you know what I mean? I hope they don't do nothing stupid. So all James wants is a normal, traditional wedding. OK, Jack? I do not want it to be like a normal, traditional wedding. Oh. I'm not doing church. Oh. No. Church would just be weird. Like, inappropriate? Totally inappropriate. I'm a gay. You're okay? <laughs> Basically, we have a theme, Midsummer Night's Dream. <laughs> I want James to arrive as if, like, he's arriving in the middle of a scene. That is so cool. <laughs> so there's, like, actors will just, like, surround the car, and then, boom, they're gone, and they're vanished. And then, like, so there'd be, like, a 45-minute version of scenes and stuff, which we could cut together. Boom, here's a performance. Like, putting on a play yeah. and a wedding. Directing a wedding. Directing a wedding. Oh, that's so cool. And if you like that... Jack's got another kick-ass idea. I want there to be an actual, real-life donkey. <laughs> <laughs> OK, yeah, great. Midsummer Night's Dream, Bottom gets turned into a donkey um, halfway through the play and has a crazy bit where he's having sex with a queen of the fairies, which is brilliant, and uh, he's a donkey. And I thought about, how am I going to incorporate the donkey into the wedding? Like, and I thought, we'll just get a donkey. <laughs> well, that does make sense. So the boys head to the countryside in search of a star. How you doing, buddy? <laughs> Organising a wedding in three weeks, yep. and um, it's a Midsummer Night's Dream theme. Okay. And one of the characters in Midsummer Night's Dream gets turned into a donkey. Yeah. And um, just thought it'd be a really cool idea yeah. to have a real donkey there. Yeah, the donkeys are always the star attraction of yeah. any event. They're really popular. How much are they, do you normally charge for like hiring them out for like the day and stuff? Um, how long would you like them for? We probably want them for like, two hours, maybe. The cost would be about four hundred for that. Four hundred pounds. Let's hope this donkey can act. Well, what are you willing to...? 250 I'd be happy with that. But that doesn't sound good to you, right? No. OK, thank you. We'll have a think and then we'll... Yep. Then we'll um, yeah, that's yeah. fine. See you later, fellas. With the ass still up in the air, it's back to the drawing board for Groom Jack. Meanwhile, organised James is on the Isle of Sheppey, where he grew up, to visit his dream venue with his family and bridesmaid Alex. A proper traditional wedding, that's what I want, to get married back home on the island. I want the old traditional crowd to pick me up and take me there. Even the dinner, like, I've even thought of, like, having, like, a free course meal, like, all the nice and thoughts you can think of, because you only get married once, you want it all, do you know what I mean? You, you want to splash out on everything. Oh, look at this, Jim. Isn't it nice? <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. It's really pretty, isn't it? Oh, it's really nice, James. Jack this yeah. side, Jack's lot. Jack's I this side, one. this side, Mum. Yeah. Are you having yeah. sides? Are you going to have sides? I don't know. I don't know what's going to happen. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> <laughs> it's lovely as well, especially this is at home, isn't it? Yeah. On the island. Look outside. <gasps> look at that oh view. Oh, my God. Outside, Could you get married like, outside? I don't know, imagine just like worst, yeah, but worst case scenario, and it's like. Yeah, it's, mm. well, it's windy today. It's windy, Can you imagine yeah. what it'd be like if it was raining? An outdoor wedding would be a problem for James, but perfect for Jack. He's on the hunt for a venue to stage his Midsummer Night's Dream production, and he thinks he's found a hidden gem Willow Cottage Outdoor Theatre. This is beautiful. We're literally in the middle of a forest. 
just 15 minutes away from Jack and James's home, Willow Cottage could be ideal for Jack's Shakespeare-inspired wedding. This is amazing. Uh, amazing. They are meeting theatre owner David to see the grand arena that will stage Jack's play. What? And then we have a little empty theatre. A little dugout empty theatre. That's crazy. Yep, a crazy big hole in the ground. This is not what I expected at all. This is amazing. Back on the Isle of Sheppey, James is keen to find out what his wedding will entail. But how? Well, his mum is an amateur psychic, which is handy. So, mum, before what Jack's going to do? Can you see it being in like a venue like this, though? Do you reckon Jack will pick something like this? Bigger. Bigger? Yeah. yeah. What, like stately home big? Yeah. Oh, oh James. Hell. And psychic mum has even foreseen what they'll be wearing. I do. I am seeing tweed suits for you. No, you're picturing navy, mum, no? I am seeing the tweed. Well, both, or just me? No, both, you and Jack. So, you both look like idiots. Who wears tweed? Well, you will be on your wedding day. Toad and Toto, that is what you're going to look like. Oh, no. bloody <laughs> hell. <laughs> Taking a piss. James isn't exactly loving his mum's premonitions and heading outside to see the backdrop to his traditional wedding pictures... It's beautiful. ..he soon spots something else he wouldn't want. I wouldn't have a marquee, though. Cos, look, it's all blowing, imagine that. I would never have the indoor bit, do you know what I mean? No, you definitely don't, don't want blow one. Over. Yeah, but, no, but you're seeing it like that, but then doors do open. They look pretty inside, but it's just, look, oh, yeah, it's, it's shaking. Yeah. We live in England, it's going to rain, do you know what I mean? You can put up how many marquees you want, but it, it's not going to stop the winds in the rain. And that's my biggest fear. Back in Essex, happy with his theatrical venue, Jack's looking for somewhere to hold his reception and has a plan to keep out the British weather. And then out here is where we, we have put the marquee. Did he say marquee? That's incredible. The marquee that we, we want to get would be a see-through marquee, so you could see all around. Yes. Um, so we're yes. just going to go and stand in the middle of the field <laughs> and just yes, see what you can right. see around if that's OK. Thank, Thank you. you. Just in the middle. Of this. <laughs> <laughs> just like, poof. I love it. Yeah, I absolutely love it. And with £12,000 burning a hole in Jack's pocket, even rain wouldn't dampen his day. Let's get umbrellas, man, if it rains. Yeah. Like... <laughs> we can hire a person to be the umbrella guy. <laughs> <laughs> the venue's ticking every box for Jack. But how much does a dugout amphitheatre and a field for a marquee actually cost? Obviously, price. That's the way of the... Uh, for the venue, it's 1000 OK. 1000 and that's the whole time? Yes. That's unbelievable. <laughs> but can it hold legal ceremonies? I can have a blessing, Yeah. but uh, I certainly can't get married here. That's... Without a wedding licence, this could be the end of Jack's Midsummer Night's Dream. I feel a bit disappointed that we can't legally get married there, which is shit. But with his emotional connection to Shakespeare's play, Jack makes a big decision. I think I'm just going to have to do registry office. Really quick, really like, boom, legal bit, done. Despite this being the first year that same-sex couples can get married anywhere with a licence, Jack has decided to say their vows in a registry office. You may kiss the Kisses. groom, and you then you're like, the groom. bye! <laughs> Run out. Yeah. So Jack plans to leave James at the registry office, then meet him again for a blessing in a field. And then once again, you're waiting for him to walk up the thing. Well, I'm probably going to walk, we'll probably meet and walk together. Oh, right, yeah, yeah. So I think him walking up the aisle is just weird. Girls do that. Uh, Gays don't do that. Also, he can direct a play in a muddy amphitheatre. It's the end of week one, and with all the venues and marquee costing over £4,000, Jack has travelled to Kent to relay the first part of his wedding plans to his dad. Right, dad. Hello, mate. Hi. Good to see you. Yeah, you too. What's going on? Booked. Oh, a venue. Yeah, because the The theme is Midsummer Night's Dream. Ah, oh, my favourite. I know. And it is at all, isn't it? The reason why we did that is because it's the first ever Shakespeare that I ever knew anything about. Yes, same as me. Because of Mum, because she was in it and she talked about it all the time and she absolutely loved it. So it's nice to do Midsummer Night's Dream because she... I then kind of feel like she was still there. Yeah. Because when I think of Midsummer Night's Dream, I think of Mum and I think of yeah. all the memories and watching it. Well, your mum will be up there looking down well proud, mate. <laughs> I know she would. I know she would. That'd be good. That sounds good. That sounds great. Who does blessings? Any big or any, or or religious? I don't know. It's not going to be a religious blessing. Can't get someone just with a collar. Like, they can't uh, be religious, can they? I don't want it to be religious. It's not like me at all. I'll do it. No, you won't. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, could you be, won't. I could be a vicar. <laughs> Stop it. It's just me out. You know I should come to see you. <laughs> While Jack is getting stressed by his dad, James is calming his nerves over a coffee with his psychic mum. Yeah. When you first come out and told us, we knew all along, I knew there was something there all along. We should have earlier. <laughs> 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 no, I just did, as a mum was swinging it, you know. And I got three sons. One's still done on paper, but I've always seen Jack as a son anyway. Yeah. Since he lost his mum, innit, I've sort of... I don't know, she's had that little thing for Jack. So well done for getting married. <laughs> After a week away from Jack, James is starting to worry. Hey, uh, you know the son. Yeah. I'm really nervous, cos I don't have a son, do you know what I mean? It's my big day. I literally just turn up and get married. What, what would be your worst nightmare? 
a theme and stuff like that. It's, you don't do that, do you? It's for your birthday party, isn't it? Yeah. Not for it's your wedding. wedding. <laughs> he knows it would be your night, but mind you, it's his way of getting you back. It's, yeah. But what for? Marry him. Doesn't need to get me back. No, but you are really picky, aren't you? Yeah. You do nag at him a lot. The you're, you're the serious one, and Jack is the, he's the, he's the kid. Meanwhile, big kid Jack is in his element. Directing the play, he and James will watch on their big day. Yeah, Midsummer Night's Dream is a comedy. It's really funny. Stupid thing happened. A guy gets turned into a donkey and falls in love with the Queen of Fairies. Like, it's all really farcical and stupid. Where's my bottom? Yeah, yeah that's funny, isn't it? Having condensed the five-act play to an hour-long show, Jack spent £600 on a company of actors to bring his vision to life. Scene one. So, in there, we need Lysander, Hermie, Helen and Demetrius. Eramus and please be. Just stand up. And this will clearly be a dream with a difference, as they change the words of the world's most successful playwright. Typically, our happiness with Sean. Come. Well, that's, that's me writing Shakespeare. Sure, just made that line up. <laughs> <laughs> it looks like Jack's version will be a very loose adaptation. That means bugger off to the photos, so then the audience members. Well, audience members, wedding guests, whatever. I think uh, having the play, as well as the wedding, that is way too much. But we have to do it. Either just push it back, or is there no play? With the play cast and rehearsed, this untraditional wedding won't be complete without the cast's outfits. So Jack's come to a costume store. Is it weird that I quite like it? Yeah, a bit yeah. weird. <laughs> Top of his list, the Queen of the Fairies. This is very much what I would imagine Titania being in, cos it has, like, wings. And an all-important donkey's head. What? It's super, super cool. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> I think you would notice someone like Stream if there's all, like, fairies, woodlandy, Man with a donkey on his head. Absolutely. Unless he thinks he's done a farmyard thing. That'll Shrek. Still, with over £100 spent on actors' costumes, Jack's delighted. Happy days. Happy with their earlier choices, the boys are down the pub, where their thoughts finally move away from staging a play and onto planning a wedding. Mm -hmm. I'm really happy with that. Hallelujah. I'm really happy. <laughs> we start working out now, prioritising details of what needs to be done. Big, okay, number one, on. bar, tables and chairs. Decorations and centrepieces. And all of that shit that comes with that stuff. Still hoping to afford his donkey, Jack has a money-saving idea. Also, for, like, the cake table... Oh, shit, yeah, cake. I have in my house loads and loads and loads of pallets mm. that I made my coffee table from. Did you? I've never heard about those. <laughs> <laughs> so, I think that we should, together... Make a cake out of pallets. <laughs> Probably tastes better. Make a cake table out of pallets. Great. So a cake table made out of old pallets. But first, how to sneak them out of the house. If worse comes to the worst, yeah. and somebody sees that we're here, it would be better if they saw me, not you. So why don't I go in first? And if nobody does answer the door, I'll give you a signal. You can bring the van all the way up and I've we'll literally key, yeah, we'll in. Guy Ritchie the whole place. Yeah, all right. right. Can I talk to my cat? Uh, yeah, but briefly. <laughs> it's got a job to do. Go, run, 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 run. Run. <laughs> Let's go. No one in, no? No. I swear I could hear somebody move, though. Oh, this is so weird. Thinking that no one's home, the boys head inside. Okay. So where, where are these pallets? Oh, in the garden, operation. They could be back any minute. Hello. Hello. Oh, my God! <laughs> Kelly's... Unless you count James's friend Kelly. What the fuck do we do? Whoops. Hello, mate, you all right? Yeah, I'm going to come up and hug you. Jack, we've got to go. Oh, no. If I ever set up a strike force, you're not in it. Let's go. You see you later. Quick, we've got to go. Pallets. Roll. What? We've got to turn these into a table. Yeah, you're right. That is what we have to do. How many do you need? I don't know, mate. One hand, pallet man. Hallelujah. Step on it. Let's go, let's go, let's go. <laughs> OK, now let's go. A few hours later, James is back home. And Kelly can't wait to spill the beans. What the hell is going on? I was in the bath and I had a knock on the door and I was like, I think I'm around in the bath, put my head under water and then when I came back up, I heard some people talking and then all of a sudden I heard a massive scream and it was Jack. What was he doing? <laughs> Stealing pallets. Adam, does he look skinny? Pallets. In my ideal wedding, pallets are not on a scene, so obviously he's not doing what I want. What I'm just so confused, I really don't understand why. <laughs> just a little bit scared now. 
I just don't have a clue what he's going to do with these pallets at the wedding. So hopefully he hasn't gone off too off king. But fingers crossed, it's nothing big that he's going to do with these bloody pallets. Back at Best Man Jay's, the boys get to work on their cost-cutting cake table. This table needs to look nice, otherwise James will just think we're idiots. With savings made on the table, Jack and Jay splash the cash at a car boot sale. How much all for? Six quid. Done. Spending £100 on decorations. <laughs> That's what we need. That's really cool. £200 on bridesmaid dresses. Let's go. And £300 on James's wedding transport. That's awesome. Cheers. Thank, Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <sighs> Hooray. It's ten days until the wedding, and with Jack's play in good shape, he's finally ready to find James's wedding outfit. So long as it fits in with his dream theme. Because Mr. Sunlight's dream is very foresty, English countryside, so I'd like to get him in, like, a tweed suit. Which, weirdly enough, is exactly what James's mum said. She is psychic. Oi! Jack's on the hunt for a country suit in distinctly urban East London. Most three places you go to are, like, old men, tweed, and I definitely don't think that's mine and James's style. I think East London is cooler, more edgy. And definitely more grimy. Look at that He can wear this. <laughs> but hidden down a back alley is the gem that Jack's after. Hello, hi, I'm Jack. Hi, Jack. Nathan. I know, nice to meet you. Hello. Hello, Joe. Wow. I have lots and lots and lots of tweed. Lots. Yes. Yeah. So um, cool. I was really looking for a tweed suit for both me and uh, my partner, James. Well, I mean, basically, that, that's what we do. There's 600 tweeds here <laughs> you know, in, all, in all these cloth books, because what we do is mainly a made-to-measure service. OK. Um, and so we've got hundreds of tweeds for that. Right. But minimum turnaround time is going to be six weeks. Which is four weeks longer than Jack has. What we do have is some uh, ready-to-wear. There's not a huge selection. There's only four different tweets. And like that, Jack's options drop from 600 to just four. Meanwhile, in the tailoring capital of Britain, James has brought Alex and Kelly to show them his dream wedding suit. That's if he was arranging his own wedding day. I want a tailored suit, don't I? Mean, I want it to be expensive. I want it to fit amazing. I don't want it from some high street or anything like that. You're going to wear it once in your life, and I want the best thing in the world. So what's the occasion? My big day. Wow, yeah. congratulations. Thank you. When is the big day? Don't actually have a clue. You don't know when don't the wedding know is? don't know anything. OK. Yeah. So okay. it's all very scary. Do you know where it is or...? No. No, no idea at all. <laughs> no OK. Day. Don't okay. Know so what's the plan on the suit front? Well, I kind of want... What is this? Something like that. I want, but I don't know what Jack's going to get me. OK, so he's picking your suit for you? Yes, he's picking okay. everything. You're a brave yeah. man. I want, like, a Royal Navy, the handkerchief and a tightening red. Handkerchief turn. OK, that's no problem at all. Um, so Not in terms... Not at all. Yeah. OK. <laughs> Because I've looked at so many navy suits, I've fell in love with it. That's what I want. You can't put me in nothing stupid. Probably like a little hissy fit. But then, it, yeah, no, he might not. Depends if you think green tweed is stupid. Oh, my goodness. It does really look really lovely. I really like this. What colour are these? Is this? <laughs> so, what, is that a suit? Yeah. It's like a dark green. Mm. OK. Whatever it is, it isn't the navy that James wants. <gasps> What do we think, ladies? Oh, yeah. Like yeah, I love it. Yes. Do you like that? I love the tie. Yeah, I think red. I think the red tie is yeah, perfect yeah, yeah, yeah. for you. Is he ready to get married? Yes, yeah. yes, Good. he certainly is. How do you feel in it? No, I really like it. You really like yeah. it. I feel quite emotional just being in it. That's exactly what you wanted, isn't it? Yeah. Perfect. Come on, Jack. Just telepathically know. <laughs> so like that for James. Sadly for James, Jack isn't psychic. Uh, I think the yeah. theme, the style, what, what we're doing all day is perfect. It'll fit right in. With James's green tweed sorted, that leaves Jack with just three others to choose from. I really like that. Do you? I do, actually. Ah, oh, yes, so do I. I like this one. So, how much would this one, as a three-piece, be? Then that one... 7 dollars Each? For, yeah, for a three-piece, yeah. We are on a bit of a budget. What do we do? Oh. With only £500 budgeted, it's time for Best Man Jay to come to the rescue. If we bought both of them... I'd definitely do your discount on taking two suits. What is your budget? 500 quid. OK. Well, that's nearly the asking price. Give or take a £1,000. Could you do it for 1200 for the two? Go on, then. <laughs> OK, brilliant. And so Jack shakes on the deal. £1,200 for the couple's tweed suits. But it's not even close to what James wants. It's the start of the final week and time for the stag do's. Oblivious to the play, the tweed, or the possible appearance of a donkey at his wedding, James and his friends are all dressed up for a good old-fashioned night out. So, James, what do you think we're going to be doing? Uh, I don't know. I think he's going to have organised something really lovely for you. He knows us all, doesn't he? Yeah. He knows that we're not going to do he nothing stupid. Do... It's been two weeks now and I'm missing him a lot. 
Like, I didn't think I realised until this morning, everyone's here, we're all onto the same roof, and you're just like, someone's missing, and it's Jack, which is really upsetting, but holding it in, because I know I'm going to see him very soon. Meanwhile, best man Jay has arranged for some family time for Jack, his brother and dad. He's sent them to an airfield with a sealed letter. Mysterious. Oh, I put the gun in. I'm shaking. Today I can't be there, but it's a perfect opportunity to spend a few moments with your family before returning to the mayhem of planning. Your mum will be really proud of the work you've done. <clears throat> um... Um, <clears throat> says that she'd be really proud of the work you've done and also pretty sure that she'd want to see you continue to enjoy yourself. So today is a day to have a giggle with the people you love. And, uh... <laughs> oh, this is ridiculous. <clears throat> and uh, try a few new things in the process. Flight school. <laughs> <laughs> right, OK. Flight school. Flight school. James's stag party is finally up and running and everyone's ready for a posh night out. Sadly, that's not what they're getting. What? White water centre? <laughs> What a knob! <laughs> I hate Jack. Oh, James, we're dressed up. We will pick out outfits that hide our lumps and bumps and go sit in there. I am not dressed on this occasion at all. I think if I knew, I would have worn little speedos, but apart from that, I have to wear a wetsuit wet and look like a bloody idiot. Back at the airfield, best man Jay has spent £200 of the wedding budget to give Jack a day to remember. Everything's shaking. There's nothing <laughs> I'm so glad that I said to Jay, you sort it out, because there's so much that's going on in my brain about food, about plates, about everything else, that today I can just forget about it and just kind of slightly feel what James will be feeling on the day, just kind of go, what? So, yes, yeah, made me more excited about how James is going to fit because I had no idea when I was coming up that lane what was going to happen. In Essex, James is now in for a rocky ride. <laughs> I can't breathe. A lot of water went into my mouth, but it was fun. I don't think I'll detect it exactly what I'm glad here because it was fun. It's intense and everyone enjoyed it, which is the main thing. I'm always going to salt me at the wedding. Scary stuff. Oh, no! I can't I It's only days until the wedding. And although everything's booked for his performance of A Midsummer Night's Dream, Jack still hasn't booked any food for the reception. Come here, Jay, 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 Jay. I've got an email. I've attached a menu and a quote for the same. I want to see the price first. That stresses me out. Total is 3085 OK, well, that's a lot of money. <sighs> that evening buffet is like... Boudouche. That'll be like a buffet. Yeah, I don't think we rough. need anything like that. Yes. Yes, you're right. We're essentially doing the lunch twice by doing the evening buffet. That's true. Oh, cos I want to be so... So cheeky. Can we offer you 1500 If he doesn't say yes to us, he won't earn any money that day because it's too late and no-one's as silly as us. But one man can't be expected to stage a masterpiece and negotiate catering costs. Can you call and talk to him? Yeah. This is really stressful. Hello, uh, it's Josh Carter here. I'm Jack's best man. Would you possibly consider doing the, the, the barbecue lunch with the glassware and the bar for 1500 all in? Uh, 1500 Yeah, I can do that. Yeah, that's fine. Oh. Amazing. Oh the guys have got a bargain, although they've had to knock off the evening buffet to do it. Yes! <laughs> we are on notices, ceremony, Willow Cottage, marquee, actors, decorations, suits for you two, VW camper, food and bar, £10,034. <laughs> That's fucking brilliant! You know what we need to do there? What? Talk about that donkey. Yes. With money to spend, Jack can finally book his leading mail. Get that donkey's agent on the phone. Hello there. I was just calling um, to speak to Sam about hiring a donkey for my wedding. Yeah. Is it feasible to do it for £200 all in? And Because um, we're not really able to go much higher than that. Should we do it for 250 250 Yeah. Yes, yes. That's £150 less than his first donkey search. Thank you very much. Cheers. Bye-bye. So, with the food and midsummer character bottom booked, it all adds up to one thing for Jack. I think we've got a wedding. It's the day before the wedding, and James is miles away from Savile Row in Mayfair. He's been sent to a back street in East London to collect his wedding suit. I'm not filled with confidence in the area. I really want a navy suit, really, like, really slim fit in. I'm going to wear it once in my life, and it, it's got to be nice and it's got to be expensive. Oh, nice. Well, it's not really nice. To be fair, his psychic mum did warn him, but what will he make of the tweed? Hey, <laughs> hi. You all right? Are you I'm James? James. Yes, okay. I am. Nathan, good Thank to meet you. you. I assume it's tweed. Yours is in there. <laughs> <laughs> 
Have you seen it? Have you opened it yet? No, I'm not well, done. Well, then it. open it. Oh, my Jesus. Good on my Jesus or bad on my Jesus? No, I'm a little bit nervous. <laughs> it's green. It's green. And Mum was right. Tweed? Tweed? Yes. <gasps> I said you look, would look like the... <laughs> yeah, thank you, Alex. Let's yeah. retract that comment, then, shall we? <laughs> oh, it's a bit itchy, isn't it? Well, it's tweed, babe, isn't it? You ready? Oh, my God, hold on. Yeah? You look really good. Yeah. Do I look like a farmer? No, no, you're like no. A farmer. What farmer do you know wear bloody ties? I didn't really expect it. That's a godson issue. Like, like I know mum because mum said mum said tweet, but do you know when you kind of like you had that image in your head? Yeah. It's not navy, is it? It's, it's not, not navy. navy. Do you love? I like the, now the trousers on. Look, got like a nice little bum. You got a little nice little bum. You do. <laughs> Get that out on the dance floor. I'm a little bit nervous though that he's not got too carried away and he's done a massive thing for the wedding. So she dressed in this. I look like a blanco. So are you. Happy to wear this on the wedding day? Like, don't have a choice. No. <laughs> oh, if I'm wearing this, yeah. what does the venue look like? Having blown the rest of the budget on decorations, back at Willow Cottage Theatre, with the help of his closest friends, Jack is dressing the marquee. That one needs to move over there a tiny bit more. Bring it forward a little bit. Still keen to set new traditions, Jack wants to write his own vows. How on earth are you going to sign your life away? What are you going to say? <laughs> <laughs> Normal wedding vows are like through sickness and in health and all that shit. Yeah. Millions and millions of people have said those words, and it just means nothing. I have no idea what to write. I'm going to have like a bunch of promises. I like promise to. Five or six promises. I promise to love you for the rest of my life. I promise to share the ups and downs, the dum ba dums and the dum ba dums What are the other lots of dum ba dums <laughs> This <laughs> is, this is the round no, and this round. is the round and round. <laughs> that is rubbish. Starting again. I promise, I promise to love you forever. Never take him for granted. And cherish each moment we spend together. Through sick and thin. But what about the really important stuff? I promise to share the fluffy blanket yeah. on, on every occasion necessary. What do you argue about in the house? Something about those fucking dogs. I hate them. And be kind about, about the China, China dogs. <laughs> yeah, that's great. It's got to end on something nice. These are my wedding vows. I kind of feel like I want to say, like, I look forward to adding new additions to our family, but none of us have got a womb, <laughs> so we're not actually adding anything. We're just no. taking them from other people. <laughs> I look forward to building a family with you. Just that one line? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah? That was done. Wanna hug it out? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Well done. Yeah. It's the day of Jack's big Midsummer Night's Dream play and the couple's two wedding ceremonies. And at home in Essex, James is with his family, friends, and bridesmaids Alex and Lana. I'm really, really nervous. Today's the day. And there's no turning back. So yeah. whatever he's done, he's done. You just gotta go with it. And James is hoping for the sun to come out. I think it being outside. Be yeah. Well, it's not looking good. Everyone here is thinking about the wedding details. <gasps> we can't cake. Cake. Ooh, yeah. What cake is it gonna be like? I don't know. With just three hours until the registry office ceremony, Jack and Jay are putting the finishing touches to the reception venue, setting the homemade cake table in place. Oh my table! Ready for the ultimate last-minute preparation, building the wedding cake on the actual day. I think we're absolutely mental with this cake, but it will look great. I can't believe I'm doing this. I really like it. The cake's finished, but it seems the pressure of organising two ceremonies and a play is getting to Jack. Um, Jay, my vows are not here. Hi, right, in the corner up at the roll box. While Jack panics about his lost vows, back in Essex with only a suit to put on, James is feeling relaxed. And still in his pyjamas, it's time to see the bridesmaid dresses. I'm not really sure about the bling bit, but I think it's nice. Yeah. <laughs> is there anything you... Is that right that we can quickly change before anything happens? No. Well, oh, we've got another tassel. Oh, OK, we've got that bit, but I like it. With the bridesmaid dress as a success, it means only one thing to James. I'm going to get dressed now. Yes, yes! <laughs> dress! Do we look all right together, do we? I think so. I think maybe it's a pink tie to match your dress next time I've got boots from that. Yeah. And with same-sex marriages now legal, the conversation turns to where the ceremony might happen. You can get married anywhere, though. It doesn't just have to be... Like, as a civil partnership can only be in one place, like a yeah. registry office or whatever, no, when you're it's, married. it's nice to be, like, every other couple. And after putting on his less-than-traditional seat, <gasps> James's less-than-traditional transport arrives. Jim. Shut up! <laughs> <laughs> I've never afforded that. And with that, James's hopes of a vintage wedding car have completely stalled. In London, best man Jay's house has been turned into a theatre dressing room. <laughs> donkey on my head. <laughs> But amid the madness, Jack's having a meltdown. He still can't find his vows. No, nowhere. They're gone. Right, it's going to be really simple. We haven't got time. It's nearly half past ten and we've got to get there. It seems that Jack may have been more preoccupied with his play 
than he was with his wedding ceremony. Oh, bollocks. He may be unaware that he's heading for the registry office, but James seems to be accepting Jack may not have taken the traditional route for their big day. I think now I have to go with it's not traditional. You got butterflies? Yeah, okay. big butterflies. Are you predicting anything, Mum, or not? Are you not going to tell me? I'm not going to tell you. Not going to tell me. No, because obviously everything I've seen... It's been right. It's, it's been a bit right, yeah, and I don't want to say if we kill us the case, that's right, and I've smelled Because we're here now, we've got... We don't know how long we've got. We've got an hour or so in a car. Oh. Well, after just 20 minutes in the van, James is arriving. Yeah, oh, we're going in somewhere. We're at the registry office. And inside, the pressure is getting to Jack as he waits. <laughs> What's happening? <sighs> Have we not? Why is it not happening? <laughs> Will the registry office be a step too far? I love you so much. We had such a good day. Come on, let's walk down the aisle. Give <laughs> Oh, Jesus. I'm getting married. <laughs> Give me some of that. After three weeks apart, it's time for Jack and James to be legally wed. And luckily, Jack's remembered the vows. I promise to love you for the rest of my life. I promise to stand by you through thick and thin. I promise to share the fluffy blanket and be kind about the horrible China dogs. You mean the absolute world to me, and I can't wait to share my life with you. I promise to love you for the rest of my life. I promise to stand by you through thick and thin. I promise to share the fluffy blanket, and I can't wait to share my life with you. <laughs> Jack and James, it gives me great pleasure in announcing you are now husband and husband. You may kiss each other. <laughs> Now legally married, James may think the surprises are over, but Jack's about to leave him to set the stage for his next wedding act. I've got to go. Awkward. <laughs> and I need your ring. I'm really sorry, just trust me. We've done this bit now. The day begins now. I love you. Love to. Right. See, see you later. later. Jay, Holly, let's go. <laughs> you bye, bye. I love you. Bye, bye. bye, everyone. See you later. <laughs> So what's the plan now? Do we get back in the car? Or do we... I don't know, Beck. Has he left you anything? No. Like a note? I think the most annoying thing is that the ring's been taken off and we've got to do it all over again. I think, for me, that's the hardest part. Like, I've seen him and now we've got to react it again. But I think taking the ring, I don't know. I don't know what's in store now. I'm scared. Hopefully he's not got nothing plans. That's too stupid the next time. Um. Oh. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, we've got to get in. We've got to get in. Oh, my God. <laughs> so I assume it's a thing. Exactly what James didn't want. It's not a donkey. That's Midsummer Night's Dream. I personally would not do a thing yeah. for my wedding. You've gone up, you've seen Jack, and now you've hit a, yeah. you've hit a crash. I personally thought that we both, me and Jack, would just get in this car. I yeah. thought that. Scared. Yeah. And maybe he should be, as at the venue, two donkeys and the cast of a Midsummer Night's Dream await. Deep breath, James. Yeah, deep breath. Just... Oh, no. James, is someone waiting for you? What the hell is going Stop. on? There's donkeys. There's loads of people. Oh, my... Oh, my God. Oh, my... Little Pete. That no. brief story of young Jack. I just love for cheese. Oh. <laughs> and we all hear it. Yes. Bring them in. Yep. Oh, we've got to go. Oh. Right. Oh, you're Come you're on, ladies. Come on. Come. I pray you have that. Oh, my God. Bye. We're off to the future to find your love, to meet all of your wildest dreams. It's all very exciting. It is very exciting. And confusing. I'm not going to you. He may be wearing a tweed suit, had his ring snatched and been greeted by donkeys, but now it's time for Jack's surprise blessing. What have you done? Oh, oh man, what are you making me do? What from here? I've walked through the valleys of the wilderness in time Only to find out I, Jack Derek Harding, do take you, James Edward John Finch, to be my lawful wedded husband. I, James Edward John Finch, to take you, Jack Derek Harding, to be my lawful wedded husband. It is my absolute honour to declare that you are both <laughs> now Mr Finch Harding, gentlemen. Yeah. <laughs> Ceremony's finally over, and Jack showing no signs of scarpering again. James now has a chance to confront his new hobby. I was abandoned. Oh, what, when I Will you run away? Thing? Isn't this worth it, though? No, because I, I wanted it indoors, and obviously I can see a massive marquee. Like, you're lucky the weather is on your side today, Sunshine. Look at it, it's amazing. I don't need to convince you, it's very beautiful. No, yeah, I know it's beautiful. Yeah. You're being horrible. <laughs> what he's done for the wedding, it's not me, like... There is a lot of actors running around dressed up, which, for me, that's out of my comfort zone. Will James be persuaded once he sees the main event? Jack's adaptation of A Midsummer Night's Dream in honour of his mum.
It is to make an ass of me. <coughs> to frighten me if they could. But I will not stir from this place. Oh, no. Do what they can. I will walk up and down, and I will sing, and I will shout, and they will see that I am not afraid. <laughs> I've never a bit from a like this, and I'm glad you did. Hey, like this. Shut up, man. No, yeah, you did a good I'm, job. I'm glad to. Come to the... After three weeks and £12,000, the play is a success. <laughs> Jack's pulled off a Midsummer Night's Dream, and in Shakespearean style, he's pulling the audience up to be involved. Was it worth it? It was worth oh it for me. God. Yeah, all of that work, all of that stress, all those times I was saying to Jay, like, what are we going to do? What's going to happen? Totally, totally worth it. You've done really well, and I'm really proud of you. The handsome Pyramus and the lovely Thisbe. No, you're, you're, you're just, you just, you be a man, you be a woman, be a man. There we go, be a woman. There we go. Very good. And now, with the play slash wedding almost over, <laughs> thoughts turn to the future. The next stage now for us is going to those foster meetings. It's going to the foster meetings in July. We're starting to really look, focus on that. But enjoy married life first. Enjoy for a bit. Life. Here's uh, the next stage in our life. Way. Oh, the count of three. Bow. Three. Bow. So James has been convinced by the theme, but it's time to see inside the marquee and finally find out what happened to those pallets. Oh, James, look! Oh, look Where are the pallets? There. They're there! Oh, my God! <laughs> I didn't even know it! Oh, oh. How do you feel, James? It's a marquee. It is Look a marquee. How sturdy it is. Like, it's, it's not blowing the same no. as one in Harry. Luckily for Jack, the sun came out for his marquee choice. I yeah. think I've converted Marquees. to... Converted? Yeah. He's converted, converted to yeah. Yeah. Really? On the marquee, yeah. This is gorgeous. It I don't know if your everyday marquee looks like this, but... No, it really doesn't. No, it doesn't. It's the sturdy yeah. I want to see him now. I want to see his face a bit as well, because he's going to be so proud of himself. Jack! <laughs> what do you think? <laughs> Love it. Well done, dude. This is amazing. Oh, Lil, 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 Lil. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> Honestly, don't touch the table. Oh, yeah, I can see it wobbling. <laughs> I'm really nervous. Can everybody stand back for the table? <laughs> so I like the cake. Table, and what do you think about the cake? I love it. Oh. After a day of surprises, it's time for Jack to tell James why he chose such an untraditional wedding day. I picked me some nice dream because it's the first Shakespeare play that I ever really kind of knew because Mum drummed it into me when I was a kid. And it's wild flowers and it's rustic and it's just... I think it's just beautiful. Yes. It's I love it. it well. These three weeks I was really panicking as well, especially, like, I didn't want a theme. I wasn't thinking, like, I wanted a traditional back home. But it's nice to see... He has, he's running it to our home where we now live in Essex. And it's really nice that we're all here together and we're going to spend the happiest day of my life together. Jack's midsummer wedding may not have been what James dreamed of, but it's gone down a treat. Even the pallet cake table's a success. <laughs> not for very long. After all the hard work, the cake and the table are ruined. But best man Jay is looking on the bright side. Dirty floor, cake everywhere, cutting of the cake's ruined, but it's much funnier, so who cares? <laughs> Thank God the bar's open. Today, I am so proud you would not believe. I mean, my head's probably about this big. His mum's would have been even bigger. She's probably looking down now. I can't believe what a great day it's been. She is, she's going to be so proud up there. I know she is. When we woke up this morning, I did not think that this is how this day was going to turn out. I think it's brilliant what he's done, and it's been absolutely magical. I'm over the moon. Happy as Larry. Chuck has 100% proved himself. He, he's been amazing. He's going to be a brilliant husband. Fingers crossed, if it happens, he will be a brilliant father, as will James. I think it's happy days from here on out. As the curtain falls, it looks as though Jack has pulled off the performance of a lifetime. I trust you now. Thank so you much. much. Thank you. No, I really, really do. I think you did really well, and I'm really proud of you. And to call you my husband. And James is so impressed, he wants to stay forever. Do you want garden? It's not our We don't live here, James. <laughs> we, do live here. we don't live here. Oh, someone's going out of our house. Don't call me, baby.